you know, many restaurants are trying to survive right now with carry out and with delivery. And we really wanted to see how people were doing. So joining me now is Ron Bartel. He's the owner of Cuzzo's Chicken and Waffles on the famous Avenue of Fashion on the city's west side. Hey, Ron. Hey, how you doing? Doing all right. Tell me how you guys are doing. Uh, we're making it. Uh, we're making it. You know, pretty much had to switch business models midstream. You know, you were used to dining, um, liquor sales, and all those things that make the business go. To have to cut those things off in order just to survive. Um, it's 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 been tr it's been tough. It's been tough. I think it's been especially tough for you guys because you closed down in August of of 2019 for renovation, and also there's a huge construction project on Livernoy. You just opened back up on March 14th. Um, so what is that? What has that been like? It's been rough. It's been rough. Um, it's been rough to see a lot of the businesses in the area close, um, especially during this time of the year when the anticipation was the weather was breaking, the streetscape had been done. People had made it through the storm just to get hit over the head with this pandemic. Uh, for us as a business, it's, it's been rough as well, um, you know, having to lay off people. Um, you know, people livelihoods are, you know, they, a lot of people live paycheck to paycheck. And having to make those tough decisions, um, you know, just because of things that are out of our control, quite frankly. How many people did you have to let go? Oh, man, we let go of, I think, 25 people. Around 25. And it's hard to be able to say if and when you'll be able to bring them back. So what kind of crew are you working with right now? Skeleton crew. <laughs> Skeleton mm -hmm. crew. Um, we probably kept around 12, 15 staff members. Um, you know, they're working, we're open seven days a week, two shifts. Um, we're running about six people per shift. Um, you know, just trying to make, just trying to make it so you know, we can keep doors open uh, and keep paychecks coming for people, quite honestly, at this point. A limited menu as well? Yeah, yeah, we limited our menu. Um, went straight to carry out call-ins, uh, mobile, mobile delivery app. Um, we're thinking about doing some things a little bit different, offering family-style meals, seeing as how families are sitting at home. Um, you know, so yeah, we're just making adjustments as we go. Everything is so fluid. You know, when you talk about um, you're, you're living this right now and so many other businesses up and down the stretch of where you are on Livernoy are living it as well. Um, and you look at how much you have maybe in reserve to be able to get through a time like this. You're not the only one in this situation. What conversations are you having with other small business owners about what kind of help you may, you may need to have, not only from the city of Detroit, but federal government? Uh, people are scared. They're worried. Um, for instance, my uncle owns four uh, retail stores in the area. He has to shut doors for each one of them. He doesn't know if he'll be able to reopen after this. Um, you know, he's an older gentleman, so you know, I'm trying to get him, um, talk to him about the idea of SBA loans and things of that nature. Um, but you know, we, we, people need a lifeline. You know, a lot of these businesses are week to week, to be perfectly honest. Um, they can't go a month, two months without some type of uh, revenue stream. Um, you know, rent abatement, rent abatement is a, a big deal. Um, you know, um, loan deference is a big deal. Um, cash and, and a cash influx is a big deal. I mean, anything that you could think of is a big deal for small business to operate because because the margins are so small. And when you talk about an area that has already dealt with the, the streetscape problem, those margins are even more thin. What are we talking in terms of can you exist and continue on with the way your business is, is scaled right now for the foreseeable future with with your skeleton crew of 12 and being able to do kind of the two services i think we'll i think we'll know that this week i think we'll know that this week uh last week was a shock to the system you know people were still spending a little bit of money but at the end of the day if people aren't working they're not gonna have money to spend so that's what people are worried about. How long will this go on? How long will the everyday worker not be able to go to work and, and get those paychecks? Because you need people need money to spend in order to place food deliveries. Like I said, we're going to keep pushing it as long as uh, we have a staff that wants to work. Because at the end of the day, people's health um, is our priority. We don't want to put anybody in a compromising position for a dollar. I just would not, never do that to people. So as long as we have a crew that's comfortable with working and we feel like we can protect them and the information that we keep receiving from medical officials, from the rest of the hospitality industry, from the state and from the federal government, we'll just keep abiding by those rules as we get them. Um, but sooner or later, we will need a lifeline like everybody else. Uh, your restaurant is a touchstone for the neighborhood. I know you guys have only been there since 2015, but um, the, the having a place in the community and the area around it has grown so much. How would you characterize what this pandemic has, has 
has done or could do uh, to this area? It could ravage the area, to be perfectly honest. It could it could really ravage the area. Like I said, to come off of that the the, the, the streetscape, which pretty much put people in the hole as is. A lot of people are playing catch up to have this come at a time like this, this time of the year, um, when the spring is breaking, when dollars should be flowing, when businesses should be popping, uh, freedom of movement, you know, um, just to have that cut off at the knees. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's disheartening. Um, so we'll see, you know, right now all you can do is pray, be optimistic, um, believe in leadership um, and, you know, just, do what we can in the meantime, between time to make the ends meet. Uh, you have delivery service and you have it from three services? Yeah, right now we, we've linked up with uh, Uber Eats, uh, DoorDash, and uh, a new delivery service called Black and Mobile. So we're using those. We also um, we also have call-in available, uh, carry-out. Uh, we're thinking about switching to a curbside service soon. So um, we'll be... Uh, linking up with Grubhub pretty soon. And um, yeah, so we're going to link up with every delivery service possible so we could feed as many people as possible so we could pay as many people as possible. When you finish each day, what runs through your mind, Ron? Will we make it to the next day? <laughs> well, how long will we be able to keep this up? Um, are we doing the right thing by staying open? Uh, quite frankly, are we putting people at risk? Uh, you know, I take that very, I take that very serious, you know. Um, but you know we've had these open, honest uh, dialogue and conversations with staff. Um, they want to work. They love what they're doing. They're on the front lines. So we want to be able to continue to support them any way that we can. Um, like I said, a lot of people live paycheck to paycheck. This is the country that we live in. This is our society. Um, so it's a catch twenty two. Um, are we more worried about the economy, or are we worried about saving lives? So at some point, uh, we have to have a meeting of minds and, and figure out a way to move this thing forward, where everybody can come out of this thing whole. <laughs>